So from time to time, I really like to sit back and think in regards to gear that has elevated my videography and cinematography. And that's led me to do a series called You Probably Need One of These. And this is where I kind of hone in on some of the items over the past 10 years that maybe in the beginning I was a little bit hesitant to buy, uh, whether it was just price or I didn't think that it would help my workflow. But then I kind of leaned in, purchased one of these items, and come to find out they really are an item that is kind of a must have when it comes to doing videography and cinematography. So in today's video, we're gonna be discussing the item that you probably need. And if you haven't already guessed it, it's gonna be camera monitors. So right out of the gate, let's just kind of get a little bit background and understanding of why monitors have just become an absolute necessity for my workflow over the past few years. And what I came to find is that uh, shooting Lumex over the past few years, or pretty much from the get-go, pulling focus was an absolute must. And when you're pulling focus on such a tiny little monitor, there are sometimes you're really just going to be guessing and praying that that focus is really what you need. So that's where a monitor can come in handy. And what I just find is five and a half, five inch. I think the Port Keys is five, this is five and a half. The Shinobi is either five or five and a half. Those type of monitors really when kind of out in the field and whether it's shooting an interview, whether it's shooting B-roll, it doesn't really matter. I just come to find that I get a lot more confidence in the footage and what the final deliverables are gonna be whenever I have the luxury of a camera monitor. Simply put, it's just a bigger way to see what you're filming, but there is a whole buttload of other kind of goodies that come along with a lot of these monitors. We're gonna jump right up into waveforms. And one thing I like on the Viltrox is with a simple click of the button, we're able to get not only our audio reads, we're getting waveforms. And if we even want to, we can go ahead and do false color at the same time. And I know this might be a lot for you guys, but waveform, false colors, plus audio, it's one of those situations where when you start to understand what the monitor and what all these are telling you, you're going to in turn get better results out of the camera. So it's going to factor in your exposure. You could even take a look at your skin tones in regards to how is the light actually hitting someone's face. Also on the side of this monitor, we're gonna click into it and then we have a little scroll knob where we can go through all the features and settings, just like any other monitor. Most, most of them are gonna offer something like this. I do like the knob, it's a quick feature, and then you can click in or you can click out of the actual setting that you want. And we also have touchscreen, which is pretty much, I wanna say these days, kind of standard with a lot of these monitors, but it's nice that the Viltrox has it. Also, we have a little SD slot for upgrades, firmware, you name it. Also, if you wanna do monitor LUTs. Let's talk about using monitors kind of out in the field. And I think I described it earlier. I'm a one-man operation that shoots podcasts. I shoot uh, interviews a lot, um, kind of like documentary style videos. And then I do some corporate work and I do events. So I say all of that to say when I'm shooting events, I love having uh, monitors mainly because I go handheld a lot uh, where I'm with either the Lumix S5 or the GH5. A lot of times camera is tucked into shoulder and this is my run and gun operation. Now, one thing this monitor particularly came with that my others do have, but for some reason, I feel like this is a notch above is going to be a sun kind of visor. And you guys saw that, you just quickly clip it on and they can also collapse into itself and you would see that that's how it would look. Now, when I do interviews, a lot of times I'm filming these by myself and monitors are gonna come in handy as well because I am typically also conducting the interview. So I'm actually interviewing the person while also doing the filming. And a lot of times what you'll see in my productions is I will take my monitors and I will turn them sideways. That way I have the ability to be doing the interview while at the same time having the ability to kind of peek up to my right and see the camera monitors. Now I do a podcast weekly where I actually do a three camera shoot and this is an absolute must, 
because in real time, I'm only able to operate one camera, but when I have the separate monitors on each camera, I can just kind of take a look to my left and to my right and front and center, and I'm able to at all times see what is going on. Are things in focus? Do things look right? Is something overexposed? So whether it be the Viltrox, whether it be the Shinobi, or whether it be the poor keys, they're always rolling. You guys can see here on the GH4, this is typically the shot that I use for wide angle. And that's why I love to use a monitor on here is because I wanna be able to make sure as far as perspective goes and what I'm filming, that everything is in focus and that everyone looks okay. Now for my B camera, it's typically with the either Lumex S5 or the GH5 and it might be the Shinobi monitor. Similar there, I love to use false colors, waveforms, and peaking. Now, one thing I mentioned as far as peaking goes on these types of monitors, if you're not familiar with it, that's how you can go in regards to pulling your focus. Uh, zebras is going to be more for exposure. Peaking is going to be for focus. And a lot of times you'll see if you're looking at someone's monitor and the actual subject that's in focus is fully red, well, that would be the peaking. I like to use blue. A lot of these monitors have several different options for colors, but overall, that is another kind of added bonus into why these particular monitors are really going to kind of get you in the right spot. Now to finish things off, as I mentioned, this video is honed in on the Viltrox uh, DC 550. And I just should probably run over what's included in the box. The sunscreen, which is a huge bonus. They actually send you a pretty sick little battery, an MP, I wanna say a Sony MP battery. You can even see that it reads out how much power it has. They give you a carrying case, which is nice because I can't say that I got those with the others. I think the port keys I did. Uh, they give you a couple of different little cords, but you do also get a nice little uh, monitor mount here. Now I'm a little bit biased as this one, I think is the build quality is pretty slick. The sunscreen's slick and uh, battery wise, been running a dummy battery that I really like, but the included battery is a nice bonus. And then I did not mention this to you guys and I don't know why I saved this to the end, we also have the ability of USB-C power. Look, I can basically just take my USB cord, but I can come to the side here and I can fully power this monitor through USB power. So it wouldn't even have to have the dummy. Don't even have to have this. I could just use my V-mount, boom. Super clean option. I've been testing it out. I really enjoy it. You guys take a look, make the decision for yourself, but I do think it'll help with your workflow. And uh, I don't expect anyone to be like me and have three, but if you can start with one, I really think it'll help you and uh, take a little bit of the edge off, make you look a little bit more professional and it won't break the bank.